To say that Europe is lagging behind the rest of the world regarding autonomous vehicles is an understatement. As usual, regulations are moving at the speed of treacle. However, semi-exciting news came last Friday, September the 26th, as UN Regulation 171 entered into force, enabling system-initiated manoeuvres like autonomous lane changes on motorways for Level 2 driver assistance systems, such as Tesla's full self-driving supervised, allowing hands-off but eyes-on operation in Europe and the UK, which will make long drives safer and less fatiguing whilst of course requiring drivers to remain attentive. So when will Tesla owners receive this self-driving feature update? How does this regulation improve safety for all road users? And does it mean we'll see quicker progress to lift other self-driving stifling regulations? With me to discuss is engineering extraordinaire Dave Dusen, who's joined me, a very knowledgeable bloke. Thank you very much, Dave, for joining me and your amazing backdrop today. Talk me around this first, what have you got? <laughs> uh, 8-bit weather. A bit of rescue and fractalus going on over here. Okay, and, yeah, you've got asteroids above here. Asteroids, yeah. There. Thank you very much for your amazing backdrop tour there. So, <laughs> what does UN Regulation 171 allow Tesla owners to do now? It allows us to have uh, the the system, as they they call it, sim. It's system initiated maneuvers. It allows uh, uh, the car to decide to change a lane automatically. So it will it will do observation, it'll look down the road, it'll do everything that, that, that is appropriate for doing a lane, before doing a lane change. And then it will indicate and it can change lanes without the, the driver actually having to do anything other than look at the road, observe the road. So you yeah. there's, there's a couple of conditions. If it can't see your eyes, then it wants you to hold the wheel to, to you know, to satisfy that, that there's somebody there paying attention. So you still need to pay attention. You still need to be ready to take over. So it's still um, supervised, I guess, is the is the word that we all understand now. Up until now, FSD in European regions, you've had to, it can suggest a lane change, but you have to operate the indicator to change lane. So my car will say, I want to go out into a faster lane to overtake this car in front. It suggests a lane change and I have to confirm it before it can actually do anything. Yeah. So um, highway entry to exit now, it'll just take care of everything on the road. It'll overtake cars. It'll pull back in, take care yes. of all the indication. And you yep. can sit there with your hands on your lap. So I've had a bit of experience with this when I went to mm -hmm. America last year and drove a oh, yeah. with FSD version 12. It's very peculiar just uh, not having to touch anything. And you just literally sit in there and you can just do that with your hands mm -hmm. or do mm -hmm. you know, put your hands down uh, on your legs. And yep. it just uh, takes over and, and performs all of the tasks without you having to, to intervene even. It, it's quite extraordinary. And that was back then. So I think this will be quite a game changer for those who are driving a lot, certainly on uh, highways or motorways it's, or British audience. It takes a load off, doesn't it? It, ta it takes a load yeah. off driving. It uh, gets rid of the timing things. So you don't. So all the timing stuff that's going on uh, will still be going on, but the car will be doing that before you've actually got to the situation where you've you've had to accept a manoeuvre where you manually where you manually say with the indicator yes I want to change the lane. Now, there's a recommendation mm. I want to change lanes. The car's already said it wants to change lanes, and it has to wait for you to say I can. Uh, yeah, it's okay to do that. Now the system can do the observation. It can put the indicator on. And it can do all the manoeuvre itself. But it would appear that timing stuff has gone from the reg completely. So. Yeah. So the the lane aborts and all that stuff appears to have disappeared, and they've now got this um, uh, lateral G force uh, thing in there, which is was quite nice. I actually went out and drove my car and monitored the ex lateral acceleration with me driving, and it's it's set up. It calculates out to about 0.3 G. What does that do exactly, Dave? Explain that in my Well, it's, it's uh, when you turn the wheel, if you turn the wheel nice and slowly, you get a, a lateral G-force of, of a few points of a, of a G. I, I think they, uh, I sorry, I convert to G. In the regulation, it's in metres per second. Okay. So they, they, they specify <laughs> acceleration in metres per second. I tend to convert it to G because that's a unit that my, my head kind of computes. If you're full-on racing around a track in your Tesla, you're over 1G going in the corners. And the tires are screeching, you know, saying, trying to hang on because you're you're stressing everything with pushing it at one g. So one g of lateral acceleration is is like racing car. Uh, anything over uh, over one g is definitely racing. Point three is quite a nice in, and I had to go and try it for myself because it because it's like point three. That sounds quite low, but when you drive it, if you drive nice and gently and steady and and uh, in a, in a nice calm manner, uh, comfortable, you know. Like you're driving your mum out to a nice meal somewhere. You drive your mum and you drive really gently and carefully. So that's what 0.3G is. Uh, and so if there's a car, if the car's driving itself, 0.3 is quite a nice thing to, to sit up. 
Yeah. Quite. So what what are you measuring it for then? Just for your own sort of uh, I, I want to get in my head what 0.3G feels like. Uh, right. I know what 1G feels like because, you know, when you go on track, you can, uh, when you put your tester in track mode, you get a G meter on the screen. You get the circle oh, yeah. and it says left and right, G, up and down. So you get acceleration braking, you get uh, lateral, uh, the lateral G is the, is the side to side. Um, so well, that's going around corners. Hmm. Um, of course, when speed increases, the lateral G tends to, uh, if you've, if you're driving down an A road and there's like a, a, a fast corner off to the left or something, and you tend to turn the wheel in quickly to, to get around that corner, or you slow down to go around it at a, at a, at a more gentler pace. Do you, do you see what I mean? Um, yeah. So I don't suppose that any any uh, any vehicle driving on FSD will be feeling much force. I suppose it'll it'll, it'll all be quite I, I think, <laughs> subdued. And I actually think for for further afield, uh, point three isn't bad. It's not a it's not a it's quite pedestrian, should we say? If you drive okay. around tr trying not to exceed 0.3 g a lot of just general going a to b drivers would go oh this is a bit slow um yeah. because it will slow down more to that you're talking about having to slow down more to get around the corner so that you don't exceed 0.3 g of acceleration uh, oh yeah okay yeah, yeah. So, so let's get let's get to um let's get back to how um this will make driving teslas safer and easier for everyone because yeah. Because as you mentioned, this this is, this replaces the um, enhanced autopilot's version of lane change and that whole five second mm. rule thing of it's swerving back into the lane if it's not yes. uh, done within five seconds and stuff. Um, it'll reduce driver workload on long trips, so yep. that'll enhance safety by minimising uh, manual exactly. interventions while still requiring driver attention um, to prevent misuse but this is a system that's now going to make it safer not only for for tesla drivers but everyone else on the road isn't it because you won't have that thing of shifting back into the middle lane again the, the sort of dangerous yeah. uh, notions that enhanced autopilot were were, were sort of forcing that's Tesla to do the situations where you're an attentive driver are you looking at are you doing all your observations but somebody's going a bit fast and sneaks up the inside uh, and you don't see them Hmm. Um, because the system is constantly paying attention, 360 degrees, you won't you won't get that. Where you know, I've seen several of them recently, where where somebody hasn't seen somebody and they've gone to change lanes and they're virtually turning into the side of somebody because they they their observations weren't quick enough or they were. Yeah. I, I mean, maybe they didn't do anything wrong. Maybe it was somebody was driving too fast or whatever. But but the but the point of when you let the system do it, all those situations are taken into account. It will not change lanes if there's something coming really quickly and you can't see it because uh, it can see everything and it won't doesn't have the silly abort things which are which were all timing based and that, i mean that's old that that regulation yeah. is so old that, that maybe timing was the way to do it back then okay well it's an exciting um thing to realize that yeah we are, we are working ever so slowly towards this you know amazing time where mm. cars will be fully autonomous it's just in the meantime we need to discuss these little problems don't we of, of, of mm. uh, you know Little, little steps to get there um but you know when when do you think tesla owners will actually receive this feature update because so far as far as i'm aware and having looked on grok this morning um no one as of the 30th of september there's no evidence of any uk tesla driver having tested the new system as tesla hasn't yet rolled out the um, compliant fsd supervised software in the region ongoing regulatory hurdles suggest a phased rollout could take weeks or months so before anyone gets too excited <laughs> it's not i mean you went out there to try and test it didn't you as soon as you downloaded well, I'll be, it, so i've been watching my i mean my car's hardware three don't forget but my car's been updating mm. its autopilot computer like week in week out for several months now i've been getting new ap updates um that, that externally unless you're looking into service mode and you look at the file sizes you you can't tell that things have changed but mine's been changing regularly every few weeks. it's actually just stopped in the last week and a half it's literally stopped doing it hasn't done any updates at all three to eight weeks ago i've been getting one a week um i've been getting that staggered core update thing uh, but outwardly in the vehicle when you drive the vehicle nothing feels different everything feels the same the problem with getting system initiated maneuvers uh, in the european software release is that fsd supervised includes all of the non-highway stuff as well so we're looking at a at staged release of will tesla take the time to create a special version that has all this stuff in it and not 
the city road stuff, the, the city street stuff that he, that is part of the pool, the full uh, FSD supervised suite. Okay, just to quickly uh, clarify, this particular thing that we're talking about, the regulation one seven one uh, and the the manoeuvres here, it is going to be for hardware three users as well as four, isn't it? Uh, so, or is it? Yeah, <laughs> am I learning on the fly here? As <laughs> always, well. it's coming to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so the problem is. The system as it stands right now has been type approved into the vehicle. So uh, an update to the way it operates uh, is quite big and may well fall under the uh, needs to be re-approved. Therefore, I can understand Tesla approving it in hardware four vehicles, uh, but I'm not so sure about hardware three vehicles because again, you have if you have to resubmit a vehicle for type approval to to get this thing accepted you're talking about resubmitting the hardware 3 s x 3 and y and they're all different so they're all different vehicles so each vehicle needs another type approval to to get this thing oh, God, this and then awesome, you and then you have to do it all the same again for hardware 4 so you have to take you have to then resubmit uh, s x 3 and yeah. y or hardware 4 type approval because yeah, it's a major change in functionality. It's it, it's a big change in functionality. Unless you can, unless Tesla can somehow demonstrate that they haven't had to change that much to make this happen, uh, which might be possible. Right. Or they can get a, a dispensation of some kind. So you're expecting it to come to hardware for users as soon as, pretty soon, within uh, weeks, you'd think. Yeah. And then mm. it'll be rolled out for, for hardware three users. Do you think, I mean, I've, I don't have um, enhanced autopilot on, on my new Tesla mm. Model Y, but I have been looking at it recently thinking, well, well, that, that would be a great thing to, to do and, mm. and test and stuff. But um, quite simply, I don't have, you know, three and a half yeah. thousand pounds lying around just yeah, to, be, exactly. to go and pay for it when I don't actually well, need it. it you know, we're, there's a lot of us in this boat. I'm sensing a lot of frustration in Australia because uh, hardware four users have been getting all this stuff and the hardware yeah. three people dumped up all the money years and years ago to yeah they get and they've got nothing so far so you see i, I did I've, I've looked at a lot of those comments today i've got a video coming out um that will be out already so it makes no sense for this video talking mm. about in australia and uh and what's going on there but i, I can see the frustration in all the comment sections are so obviously fsd was sort of you know not exactly promised but <laughs> speculatively uh yeah. you know 10 years ago is when yeah. people were were paying for it and uh but obviously tesla didn't um put out any full self-driving uh beta version until five years ago it's only been five years since mm -hmm. they bought out that that early version for for limited access um yeah. i mean that seems to have gone quite quickly and it's been you know an extremely difficult problem and, and i sort of you know yeah. You can't really hold Tesla uh, accountable for the for the length of time it's taken. It's not as if they've been sleeping no, on the job right. here. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I, 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 yeah. I, I'm not, I don't think that at all. I think Tesla are really on it, and they are really, really on it, like so on it, nobody can imagine. Um, hmm. They don't really talk to us about what they're doing, but I think there's, they need to keep things under wraps because there's an awful lot that could influence, be used to influence if that knowledge got out that they were literally seeking those approvals in certain places. Some people might complain about it so they keep it under wraps for that reason i think that's why they do it you know i'm yeah. again we need speculation city well I, well i do a lot of speculating over here so don't yeah. worry but but it, yeah. it makes sense they keep things quiet because they don't want it they don't want it out there they don't want it they definitely don't want it out there that's uh mm. yeah that, that they're doing something that somebody else can't do and and they and they want to uh, they want to keep it quiet yeah. and then and then everybody knows about it as my video goes the other day in in just two weeks in australia and new zealand they've collected over one million kilometers of fsd Amazing, uh, driving data yeah. so a uh, card yeah. in the corner if you want to watch that video which way is it going to be that way i can't do it <laughs> <laughs> it's a good video i really like it let's get back on track to this video i suppose <laughs> why is europe's progress on autonomous driving so much slower than other regions can you Put this in a very simple, easy to understand way. Is it just America innovates, China replicates, Europe regulates? Is that is it really that easy? It's hard to know why they uh, they're extremely cautious. I don't know why they're so cautious. They are being very, very cautious. The technology is very new. Um, the whole full neural net approach. I don't think it's happened before with other with other vehicles, and it's certainly not happened to the point where it's gone so quickly. Um, you know, the, the the rollout of stuff has happened so quickly. It's it's really hard to say why they they won't move quicker. 
Um, <laughs> it, it's, and the, the process itself is, is really slow because it's cascaded down through UNECE and, it, and, yeah. and all that, you know, da, 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 and it goes on and on and on. Um, I, I think the regulators are, the local country regulators appear to be responding in some territories. So in mm. some areas, Sweden, is a great example that's fresh fresh news isn't it that sweden sweden v14 is being tested by swedish authorities uh and, or has been tested and is waiting for uh final outcome in one to two weeks i believe um, this right here right. well tell you what that's dave it. let's um, yeah. what we're going to do now let's move over to patreon where we can continue this discussion and talk about Ooh. what's happening in sweden plus these are the other few things that we've come across as well which is uh I don't know. How would you explain what's going on here? It seems to be follow the money, Will. Yeah. Let's continue this discussion over on patreon.com forward slash Tesla Jigsaw. Please do come and join us, support the channel, and uh, a massive thanks to Dave. Thank you very much. I'm Will. This is the Tesla Jigsaw. Thank you, patrons. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.